All right, we've put quite a few pieces on the table through the course of the week. And before we put them together, I'm going to review. This whole thing started with an exploration of how monotheistically specific most of the theological and philosophical problems that we're accustomed to talking about are, and how many of them uh, simply don't apply when we're talking about any other kind of model. We then moved in to a brief uh, sampling, I'll say, certainly not a thoroughgoing survey, but a sampling of some of the ways in which, and points in history in which, monotheism has been a radical idea, the introduction of which constituting a radical shift in perspective. We went on to discuss some of the philosophical problems specific to the claims of a monotheistic deity, specifically a singular deity. In the course of those deliberations coming to the conclusion that, given the categorical and allegorical nature of knowledge and of language, that any knowledge of such deity could not possibly be coherent. We quickly find fault with that argument, however, as it relies on exclusively categorical or exclusively analogous meaning structures, both in language um, and in our conceptual, our personal engagement with meaning as well. We've explored some of the alternatives and illustrated some of the ways in which our common day-to-day -day speech, in point of fact, uses far more sophisticated epistemological structures than Aristotelian categories generally acknowledge. At the heart of this often unacknowledged sophistication in our navigation of is and is not, things which simultaneously are and are not what they purport to be, we tend to center on and I put quite a bit of focus on the question of metaphor and talk of metaphor-like distances in much the same way that there's distance between the two articles in a metaphor we find distance between different sorts of existential claims between the world that an ought proscribes or prescribes versus the world that the speaking of an ought describes. Putting some of these pieces together, we find that we are capable of navigating very nebulous and highly complex truth proposition structures. Again, more frequently uh, and more readily than we generally acknowledge. We're so adept at this that we rarely recognize when we are doing it. When we start talking directly about what is true, when we start making direct truth claims, we are doing so using far less sophisticated epistemological structures. We are far more adept at using truth than we are in talking about it. Bringing this back to agnosticism and the problem of a monotheistic god, this claim of singularity only seems coherent if we are holding it to a standard for coherence that we do not utilize in common speech that we do not utilize in general language, that we do not utilize in philosophical language, that we do not practice a purely artificial standard of coherence based on a radically simplified epistemology under which even the most basic principles of language could not function. What I like about this question is the way that it draws focus to principles of philosophy of language or epistemology of the pursuit of truth the understanding of truth, and especially the relationship between uh, linguistic navigations and knowledge claims. This question of God is a great foil for those subjects. We'll be going quite a bit further along the way, and I will be returning to the quick cap format until it's time for another synopsis video. Where we're focusing next is the distance, the metaphor-like distance, between the proposition of an existent God and the proposition implied by the idea of God.